Welcome to The Success Ascent. My name is Pat Mancuso, the creator and host of our show. Today we welcome Brandon T. Adams. Now Brandon is an Emmy Award winner. He's also a producer and he's an author of the book, The Road to Success. In our episode today, Brandon shares with us a number of amazing points, including how to find your success, whatever you think it takes, multiply it by 10. He says what holds people back from playing the long game. He also talks about how we overestimate what we can do in the short term and underestimate what's possible in the long term. And lastly, he says, use your mind to bring people together. I know you're going to enjoy the episode today, so on to the ascent. Welcome to the Success Ascent. My name is Pat Mancuso, and I'm the creator and host of our show. And today we have a very special guest with you. His name is Brandon T. Adams. Now I'm going to introduce Brandon in just a second, and then we're going to hear something that we probably don't know about Brandon as we kick it off. So Brandon T. Adams is an Emmy Award winning producer and host of the TV series Success in Your City. Brandon is a video marketing expert and an advisor who's helped companies and individuals grow their revenue, brand, and high-level businesses. Relationships through video marketing strategies and in-person events, as well as TV production. He's also an expert in video production, fundraising, and in-person events, as well as creating TV shows. So welcome, Brandon, to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited oh to be gosh, on today. It's our pleasure. So I always have a fun, a little fun with our guest, Brandon, and I say, okay, that was Brandon on paper. Tell us something about Brandon that's not on paper, maybe something that somebody doesn't know about you. Somebody doesn't know about me. Well, there could be a few things here. Uh, one, for those of you out there, I actually grew up selling ice for a living. <laughs> so I was in the ice business before I got into producing TV shows and, and doing all the things that I do today. Believe it or not, I was a delivery guy. So drove in the truck, drove around, put bags of ice in coolers. I that saw the picture, part. Brandon. I saw yeah. the picture next to the ice truck. Yeah, it was, you know, it, it, I still have times where I miss it. You know, every 4th of July comes along. And 4th of July week for us, we we did, it was the busiest time of the year. Yeah. And so that week was like game week for me. And so now that I'm out of the ice business, even now it's weird. Thinking like what because I go spend time with my family in, in Omaha with my brother, and it's like it's weird. I'm not slinging ice, yeah. <laughs> it's just ingrained in you. Uh, but that's yeah, that's one thing about me. Uh, and I'll give one other cool thing, I guess, uh, for you out there. I went to college, and one of my entrepreneur endeavors in college was selling moonshine. <laughs> I, no I, actually, I, I, I made I call it moonshine, but it's apple pie. I had my own mix. And I was selling it to kids in the dorm room. So uh, oh my that gosh. was my, I guess, at that time, illegal activity of making money as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, there was probably a close line you walk there. <laughs> well, Brandon, you know, the, the, our show is about um, interviewing entrepreneurs and talking about their journey of success. And I, before I, you know, kind of shift here in a little bit to just what you're doing right now and how you're impacting people, talk about that entrepreneurial type of spirit. I mean, I know you, you. the ice business was something that your dad was part of your dad, right? And you're growing up. Is yeah. that where really your entrepreneurial journey started? Or did it start it, before it, that? It, it was. I mean, I I was ingrained in it. I say ever since I was born, I mean, I was an entrepreneur because of my father. I was yeah. with him at five years old, pulling bags to the end of the truck. And I, had, I went in that business. And at a young age, I knew I wanted to buy that from my father. I bought the company. I ended up selling the company after five years. And, and so like, that was a big part of my identity and it drove my entrepreneur spirit. And, and eventually I kind of, my mind got opened up beyond the ice business. Okay. I wanted, I remember my dad saying this is like, son, use your head, not your back. Cause he had used his back his whole life. Yeah. And, and so I really took that seriously and eventually transitioned to using my mind, my communication skills and my talents to bring people together to, to make money in that way because really the ice business i love it and i think it's great and all but like i wasn't gonna go make tens of millions of dollars in the ice right. business and if i was i was gonna work a lot harder than i would have to work if i was doing some of the things i'm doing today yeah makes perfect sense makes perfect sense so let's kind of go through from the standpoint of i want you to, to share like in your entrepreneurial journey as a business owner and starting businesses what have you learned that has surprised you? You know, I I don't want to say surprise, but I'll tell you this entrepreneur journey. 
whatever you think it's going to take times it by 10. It, it is always harder than you think it's going to be. And I found the quickest way to get, and you know this too, Pat, I've seen your background, what you've done. It's, it's, it's being surrounded by the right kind of people right? and being around people that have unique talents in different industries that can help you with reaching your goal and finding a way collaboratively to find the win-win for everybody around. And so I didn't really always understand that in the earlier part of my career. Okay. I thought that I could do it all and that will put you in the ground. Yeah. Um, you, you really got to find how can you delegate talent in the right way towards something. So that's one thing I learned. And then, I mean, the other thing that really I'm learning more and more of is just your time. It's, okay. I mean, high level entrepreneurs, they have days where they're back to back for 10 hours straight and they have no gaps. Like somebody's like, oh, hey, can we do a quick call today? I, there's no way, like I, yeah. unless somebody cancels on me. And sure. so I, I guess I, I learned that really the power of time and be very conscious of your time. Because when I was younger, I remember getting mad because these people that they wouldn't take the time to do a meeting with me or right now, I'm like, oh, who, who do they think they are? Sure. Then I realized once I got to a higher level that I get it. I yeah. understand you have so many people trying to get your time. So you got to be really conscious of your time. It makes perfect sense. So this is going to sound funny because, uh, you know, I, you're, you're not quite out of those 20s probably very far, right? However, I always ask entrepreneurs, I say, okay, if you were talking to somebody, a 20-year-old, and they were looking for entrepreneurial advice, what would be the one or two things you would share with them? Uh, I was trying to find a book around here. I, the first one is go read the book, Think and Go Rich by Napoleon Hill. It, uh, the reason why I say that is because it gives you the foundation of success of like principles in life that not even just making money, but like how you go about what you're trying to achieve in life. That's right. what made me think bigger than the ice business. Um, but also it is figure out what you want and find somebody that's already achieved it okay. and find a way ideally to go into business with them and help them. Heck, if, Go add value and say, I'll work with you for free. I just want to learn from you. And I promise you, if you do that kind of mentality going towards that person yeah, and you actually add the value, they're going to want to go into business with you eventually. And that's that was my strategy to get into business with some very known people is I can't, I knew a lot, it was a long game. I wanted to be like them in some way, the traits that they had and the wealth they built. And I found ways to help them specifically with my own unique knowledge. Right. And then after consistently showing up, now I'm business partners with them and many ventures because I came from a place of value, wanted to help them in return reciprocity kicked in. But also I became a person of value that, hey, if I can make them money and make their life easier, they don't want to let me go out of their life. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be my advice for anybody out there is read the book, Thinking Rich, and then be a person of value. Find somebody who's already achieved what you want to achieve and figure a way to get help from them and get into business with them. Well, and, and a couple of things you said. First, think your girl, Rich. I mean, think about it, how old that book is and how still today it's just it's just 1937. 1937 yeah. is written. It's crazy. The other thing that you said, and you did actually what Napoleon Hill did, right? I mean, you went out yeah. and you, you just talked about that. Um, so why do you think that people don't play the long game? Like what holds them back from that? You know, it's easier said than done, but it's, it doesn't help with our life of social media and what portrays. I mean, you see the car, you see, I mean, you got to look at too, everything on see you see on social media isn't actually reality. Right. You can go lease that car, that jet, you can, there's a lot of people, Hey, maybe they're making seven figures, but they might be taking home a, a 40,000 a year salary. Like right. at the end of the day, there's a lot of perception behind it. Yep. So don't let that get to you because most people see that and they think I can become the next multi-million overnight. It, it's going to take a lot of work. There yeah. is no get quick rich or get rich, rich quick the yeah. way out there. The only thing you got to do is put in the work yep. and being consistent. And so I think too many people are, are just, uh, they're not patient and you got to be patient. And, yeah. and what I found is, People, it does take a long time. They're not willing to break through the barrier to get their first break because once you do find your first couple wins, it gets easier. And now right. looking back, my wife and I joke because it's like when we literally had nothing and, and I was sleeping out of my truck at times, we, I mean, almost lost everything. Like, and now we're, it's 
abundance is coming to us. Yeah. But that took years in the making. Most yeah. people overestimate what they can do in a year, but they underestimate the possibility in five or 10 years. And when you look at the long game, anything really is possible. Right. Well, and, and so let so that's, that, that's a great place to transition to your story. So you burn the boats <laughs> and I mean, literally you burn the boats, right? You sell everything that you have and yeah. you're, you're going to go on this journey, kind of the journey uh, uh, that Napoleon Hill did. Let's talk with a bunch of people, interview, find out, so what, where did that idea come from? Did it come from Think and Grow Rich? You know, Think and Grow Rich has been a huge component to my life and, and everything. And I know there's a lot of Think and Grow Richers out there that they're, they're going and put on their mass minds and they're, they're preachers of Think and Grow Rich. And, and that's great. Um, right. But I actually, I mean, I lived it, man. Like I, yeah. I not only we produced a, a movie on it and, and, and went through the whole process, but like I literally lived that principle and, and life around thinking rich. And the example you're talking about is uh, we created a show called Success in Your City. And I just got done through different endeavors. And, and my wife and I are sitting on a beach in Puerto Rico. And we said, what are we going to do next? We said, let's go create a TV show, travel in the country. That became known as Success in Your City. Literally got back from the trip. We created our mastermind, our game plan, our team, execution plan, everything. By December of that year, we're already traveling the country. That January, we filmed our first episode with Shea Hillenbrand, and then we just started moving forward. But it wasn't all like we burned the ships, but the part where we really burned the ships. So, and we were tested because January 1st episode, February came. I won't go into all the details, but we just went through a lot of obstacles in our own personal lives. And even right. in the, we talk about this in the road to success, but we went through an obstacle. We had to buy it a business partner. Financially, I got hit hard. I almost lost everything. The banks were calling me up yeah. and I'm trying to film this show that I wondered if anybody's ever going to watch. And so I, I kept pushing through, had a big deal go through where I got a lot of money to allow me to keep moving forward. But where we really burned the ships is three months later, I said, we're all in. We sold our house. Uh, I actually uh, was in the first conversations of selling a family business, ice business. I yeah. sold an event business. I did things, by the way, I, I was very hard to do because I didn't want to let go of things I had in my life. Sure. Yeah. But I needed to let go of the good to get the great. And so sold everything and went all in on the show. And we had no other choice. When we left our house, when the house was sold and I'm driving to Denver, I thought to myself, well, I guess we don't have a choice because there's nowhere else to go back to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's such a great story. And obviously it's impacting thousands of people. So you talked a little bit earlier about building those relationships. And I know, you, you know you've got a great relationship with Kevin Harrington and, and many other high, highly influential people. What, what's the secret to that? What would you share with people as to how they do that? I mean, it's not like to pick up the phone and go, hey, Kevin, I know Brandon. Yeah, yeah I mean, it doesn't, it, it's, it's not an overnight thing. Uh, right. And, and like, kind of like I shared before, Kevin was somebody I wanted to be like in my own way. So what did I do? I, my first engagement was I hired him to speak at my event. I mean, really the quickest way to get to high level people is it's paying for their time uh, because everybody wants something. I mean, it, it gets to be a lot when every single day somebody's pitching you, they want money, they want something from you. And I get it myself, but also my business partners. So sure. you got to find a way to stand out and actually help them. Hey, quickest ways, make a don donation to, ch to their charity pay for their time, yeah. like send them, send them a wire for 10 grand and you just see what happens then. Like those little things do actually work by the way. And yeah. so if you don't have that kind of money and you're not in a position for doing that, do a lot of research on the person, find out what makes them tick and just come from a place of adding value and, and start little steps. I mean, for me, it was starting sending a personal video to Kevin Harrington's assistant at the time. And I didn't even get to talk to him for six months. And then it came to, starting to pay him. And sure. then once I, I, I had an opportunity to spend time with them at my own event, I, I made a great first impression. We had him picked up, we treated him well, and then yeah. I found other ways to make him money. And that's just one example of many that I've done, Yeah. but it really comes down to coming from a place of how can you add value to them? How can you help them achieve their goals, make their life easier? And in return, it's going to be it's easier happen. for you to get involved. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So you, uh, I want to talk to you about the book, however, just in a second. So what did you learn when you were traveling? Like what would be the two or three things that really just like 
showed up in patterns. Yeah, it, it was it was crazy because learning from different people, but also learning my my wife and I kind of figuring out who we were as people, and we started questioning our whole what was success. Yeah. And and the biggest thing I want I would want people to take away from everything we did is, you know, just because somebody has a, a lot of money, just because somebody's maybe a two time all star or award winner or whatever their fame is, doesn't mean they're happy. And so yeah. I, I think it's great to achieve these milestones, but also you got to know who, what do you actually want in your own life, and it changes over time. So I think the first thing is understanding what is your own version of success. And it, as we get older. As we go through different phases, it will change. Whether you have kids, I don't have kids, but like whether you have kids or or what you're trying to go for. Yeah. And so figuring out what you want, not what your mom, not what your dad, not what society, not what everybody says success is. Sure. What is it you actually want? Yeah. And then once you figure out what your own version of success is, it's just going in on that. And that's what I've found is uh, the people we interviewed and learned is figuring out their own version of success. And then the other thing is, and very interesting, is every person that we came and encounter with, the ones that were seen as successful in the things they'd done, there was a, comp a component of contribution. Yeah. They had something where they gave uh, money back, they donated their time, they had causes. So finding a cause that is meaningful to you, that you can support through your journey, because people love helping people. They're more likely to do things for other people than for themselves. And so that's kind of what I learned from the journey. And it was a load of fun. It's, it's sometimes I, I can't believe we actually did what we did. So what will, uh, what will somebody uh, take away from the book, the road to success? <laughs> the, the biggest thing, the road to success will share with you what it actually takes to have success in your own life. Um, I mean, we, we are raw and real with what we shared in the book. Both my wife and I wrote it together. Um, we share from almost going bankrupt to winning Emmy awards, to getting people laughing us while we did the journey. And yeah. if you are looking to do your own TV show, it does basically show you the process of how we created a show from nothing, an idea in our head to producing, funding, hosting, and winning Emmy awards with it and getting distribution. Uh, so it is, if you want to do your own show, that yeah. will definitely give you insight, but it also will make you look into yourself and ask yourself, Throughout the journey and the stories, you'll start asking yourself, what is success to you? So by the end of the book, you're going to figure out what actually success means to you. And going into it, it might be different at the end of the book. And, yeah. and that's where really want people to just figure out their own version of success through the book. So what's the best advice that you've ever been given? Uh, you know, Cactus Jack Berenger, <laughs> he, he said to me, he was a famous inventor. He actually did a deal with Kevin on Shark Tank. And. And Cactus Jack told me one day, and I didn't, by the way, I didn't understand what he meant until years okay. later. He said to me, he said, Brandon, you become what you think about most of the time. He said it twice. You become what you think about most of the time. And I didn't quite understand. I was like, what does that mean? Sure. And it's so true. What our thoughts determine what we get. And, and so I'm very conscious of how I think. I, I don't want anything to do with any negativity. I'm, I write down my goals. I have pictures all over my house of things that put me in a, a thought process as positive. So be very careful about what you think about because those thoughts will create your outcome. Right. And so that stuck, that, that has stayed with me every single day and how I think and even who I surround myself with. And, and that's why it's important to be around big thinkers right. because that puts ideas in your mind that really help in how you think bigger. Yeah, absolutely. So this one I, I haven't prepared you for. Uh, however, I know you're going to handle it. What's the worst advice that you've ever been given that hopefully you didn't follow? And if you did, what did you learn? Huh. Worst advice. I'm, I'm trying to think on that. You know, I here's what some people, and then maybe this is advice about how some people I notice that they're, they're going to struggle if they have this mentality is right. they act as if they know everything and they want to act like they're, and, and for me, I will straight up tell you if I don't know something and I will get back to you. Some people think they know it all. And some people actually want to try to be the smartest person in the room so they can control the situation. Yeah. I want to be the dumbest guy in the room because if I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. And so uh, 
I don't know if that was like advice given to me, but just uh, something I noticed right. from other people that are going to struggle. They, they're just around the wrong people. And, and another thing too, is people that talk bad about other people. Yeah. I don't want to be around that because successful people don't have time talking or gossiping about others. They're just focused on where they're going and how they can grow. Well, and th those same people that are talking about bad about other people, they'll talk bad about you to other people. It's exactly. Why you're around those people. Absolutely. Exactly. So, um, you, you've got some amazing resources. I've got your website here. Um, what is, best place for people to reach out to you to, to get in touch? You've got yeah. products, services there, et cetera. Bra I'm at Brandon T. Adams everywhere, literally everywhere you can find me or BrandonTAdams.com. And I always like connecting with people that hear stories. It's funny. I got an interview today, like people that end up joining us to work with us sometimes. Yeah. There are people that have been following me for years. And it's always cool to hear the stories of where they first saw me or heard me. Well, it's funny because when I was doing my research, uh, Brandon Green is. Uh, I love Brandon. I wondered if you knew Brandon. Because I do. Of your background. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, so my daughter works in our business and she was actually the one who reached out to you to uh, to set this up, which is really cool when leverage, you know, leverage around you. So then when, cool. when I, I was doing my research, I went, I was looking at the website and I saw Brandon and I watched his interview. And so I haven't had a chance to reach out to him, but yeah, absolutely. So that was cool to see. Brandon is a, a great guy. I, it's funny because he came to me when we we're doing the show, 2018, was it 19 and 19. And I, I ended up helping him with building the brand online and now he's kind of transitioned, but he's given a lot of good advice for me financially over the years but it's it's been great to watch his journey his transition there yeah. you know i mean great great uh you know leader and, and just done a lot of great things for keller williams and uh, it's just awesome to see that so so brandon i know we're at a hard stop here so what's the final advice you'd give somebody as we leave yeah i would say this i mean i'll give a knock off a couple of things here be be very conscious of who you surround your, your yourself with the people in your life Find the great people that have achieved what you want to achieve. Learn to, to add value to them and, and get the business with them. And be careful. The person you marry will make or break you. I'm very grateful I, I married the right person. So be conscious of who you marry. Um, and then this quote I'll leave with you by Napoleon Hill is, whatever the mind conceives and believes, the mind achieves. Yeah. And whatever you think about the most of what you become. And really, if you can get the right mindset and conviction, those will, results will come. But you got to take action, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Brandon, you know, again, thank you so much. I, I know that you are uh, very much in demand and very popular. So I am grateful uh, that you agreed to be on the show and you just added so much value to us today. So I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. And everybody else, thanks so much for your support. You can go to www.thesuccessascent.com. We're at all the podcast sources, rate, review, subscribe, all those great things, because we wouldn't do this without your support. And as I leave every show, be happy, be healthy, be safe, everyone. Take care. Thank you for joining us on The Ascent today. You can find us at any of your favorite podcast sources. You can also subscribe to get updates and additional pieces of value that we send out at www.thesuccessascent.com. Thanks so much for your support. Please leave us a review. Have an amazing day. Take care.